Here we go. Hi, Peter Charles here, Hooked for Life Fly Fishing. And today let's look at the idea of using a Skagit setup for smallmouth. And I'm talking about a typical two-hander, Skagit head, sink tip, the type of stuff we'd use for steelhead. Uh, you could do a comparable rig on a single-hander as well. There's enough short heads out there now that a lot of people are casting Skagit rigs on a uh, single-hander rod. So let's see what I've done in the past. Now, I'm coming to this from the perspective in that I am not crazy about Skagit for smallmouth. But I have done a lot of Skagit style fishing for smallmouth while I'm doing rod demos and line demos uh, for YouTube. And uh, this is an example. I was out with my Shorts Bay uh, 511 11, and, uh, you know, Perry Poke with a scout head and away it goes. And you know, I've, you know, just fishing regularly as, you, as I would for steelhead, except I was fishing for smallmouth. So what was the kind of results I got? Well, I did this a lot and the results were not good. Uh, just swinging a fly for steel, um, for a smallmouth uh, does catch fish, but it, is it effective? Is it the best way to fish? You know, should we really be thinking in those terms? Well, I'm going to put it to you this way. If you love fishing a Skagit setup and you want to fish it for smallmouth, go for it. Knock yourself out. Enjoy yourself. That's what this sport's about, having fun. So if that's your way of having fun, cool. Go for it. No complaints. No comment. Do it. But if you're being talked into Skagit uh, as being the best way to go, I'm going to say, well, <laughs> let's, let's hold, hold the horses here. It's not exactly the best way to go. So I've got some examples here, and we'll go through the process. Okay, the line in this video is from uh, this uh, custom line that I made, uh, I, and I have a video on it. And you see this is section here, the orange is from an old XLT uh, that I cut up years and years and years ago. And turned it into different things and I'll pull this all off. And you can see the joint there where I've welded together and that's what you're looking at in that picture. So this is what I was using to fish with. Now what I had on the end of it was this uh, fast sync uh, sonar leader, 50 grain sonar leader and one of my twitch flies. In fact, it was this one right here, I think. And that's what I was fishing for smallmouth. So what was the results like? So right off the bat, you can see I'm making an overhead cast with the joint in the guides. Now you don't do that with Skagit setups. When you've got the loop-to-loop -loop connections, trying to cast with it in the guides is not the best idea. Overhead casting with the Skagit setup is not the best idea. Yes, you can do it, but it's not nice. It's pretty ugly, and those lines are super heavy for overhead casting. So what I did was I cast basically with the joint, with that loop-to-loop -loop connection here, what would have been a loop-to-loop -loop connection, which in mine is a solid welded joint, and set it on its way without any problem in an overhead cast. Because I don't have to cast very far. We're fishing structure. And so what I'm doing here is I'm just working a twitch fly down this structure. And uh, you can see when I caught this fish, or when I hooked the fish, I should say, the weld was in the guides. See, this weld is like right down in the guides when I got it. So that's not normally where we would position uh, the loop on a Skagit head. It would be out of the guides. So I would be actually fishing too far away for this fish. And as I say, this particular orange line here is actually the same as uh, an Airflow Scout uh, 180 or an OPST 175. It, it's 15 foot, 170 grains, and it's in the same ballpark. So I'm using it like a single hand line, not like a Skagit head. So this is a little guy I bring in, but my point here is I'm fishing short, a shorter range than the length of the head plus this leader and uh, the tippet that I have on the end. So here's another problem we get into. 
there's this loop here, these two loops together, would go like this when relaxed. So after hooking that fish and landing it, I'm trying to get my line back out and look what it does. It catches on the guides. And the rear loop where your rear loop and your running line joint goes together can do exactly the same thing, which is the reasons why I don't like fishing with loops in the guides. This kind of stuff happens. And uh, so, you know, I had to sh shake it out. It's fine. I got it out. Not a problem. So here I'm pulsing my twitch fly and I hook another bass and I'm and I lose it. And one of the advantages of a, a single hand approach without the loop is I've got to roll it right straight back out, then into a cast, into just a circle spay, and then I start pulsing it back through the, uh, the same stretch of water. And I don't know if it's the same fish or another one, but bango, there he is. It's a good, decent sized bass. It's a, this one was a lot of fun. And uh, the, the reality is you can make a very, very easy cast out of, you know, a full line where you have to worry about where the joint is in a loop-to-loop -loop connection, where you don't have to worry when you go to full line. So that's the reason why I'm very reluctant to go with the typical Skagit setup and a loop-to-loop -loop connection. So there's my bass, you know, a decent bass, and uh, went looking for another one. Again, I'm making an overhead cast with this l connection in the guides. You know, again, it's not something we would do with a Skagit head. Pulsing again, this is a relatively short cast. It's a nice fish, he loves to jump. And um, this is the same guy, he went, <laughs> was trying to go all the way around me. And ended up landing it, and a uh, little bit of a tail walk. And uh, again, on the, on the Twitch fly, Another decent bass, but again, it's made uh, more practical by the use of this kind of integrated line, you know, and not a typical Skagit setup is lighter than you would normally use if you're going through a Skagit. So, this is the reasons, these are all the reasons. We've talked about the loop to loop issues. A lot of my smallmouth is close range fishing, even on a big river like the Grand. I mean, the Grand is very wide. But I'm fishing small features. I'm finding these troughs between the ridges, and I'm fishing in there, and they may only be 30 feet wide. I mean, why cast 80 when you only need to cast 30 to catch fish? And that was the problem in my original clip where I was using that 511 and a, and a scout head. I was casting about 80 feet. And really, I was, you know, really not fishing effectively because of that. I wasn't working the structure, I was just fishing like I was fishing for steelhead. And it's not that effective when you're fishing for small method times. Also, there's different presentations we're going to use. I mean, I'm going to be stripping or pulsing or dead drifting. These are things we don't usually do with Skagit setups. We just swing. And sometimes I'll cast upstream. I mean, quite a ways upstream, quite a sharp angle upstream. And, uh, you know, again, do you do that with Skagit? No. So what's happening is it's narrowing you down to that 45 and swing, 45 and swing. So you've limited your presentations. I'll cast overhead. And like I say, you can do it with a Skagit setup, but it's not fun. And uh, I don't use a lot of sink tips, only on occasion. Most of the time I'm using something like this, which is just a plain old sinking leader. A poly leader, versa leader, or the sonar leader, these SA sonar leaders. Whatever it is you're using, it, this is not really you know, that's um, rated sink right. A lot of times I'm just using a floater. I really don't have a need for maximum sink because when you think of Skagit setups, they're for Western rivers, heavy sink tips, very high density sink tips, big flies, a lot of drag, a lot of weight, and to get down into the buckets and uh, the pockets and what have you, handle the high gradient rivers, the heavy currents. That, does that describe the average smallmouth river? No. I mean, the average smallmouth river is slower flowing. And uh, you don't have these rapid shoots and buckets and things, and you have to get the fly down really super fast, blah, blah, blah. Plus, you know, smallmouth will come up for flies very easily, very readily. Very often when I'm fishing this river, I'll make a cast, the fly hits the water, the fish hits the fly. It's like bang, bang. And just as I'm tightening up, you know, after making the cast, the fish is already on. 
And this happens all the time. So and it's proving the fact that those fish are reacting to the splat of the fly in the water and they're just whacking it immediately. So, you know, having something that sinks really fast, not necessary, really isn't. This river, the water systems don't need it. All the smallmouth rivers I've ever fished in my entire life, none of them demanded a Skagit setup. So, bottom line here is, if you love fishing Skagit for smallmouth, go for it. And just knock yourselves out, have a lot of fun. But if you are starting out in smallmouth fishing with, you know, a fly rod, and you hear all this talk about Skagit, you know, just get yourself a regular bass bug line or a streamer line or something like that, and just go fishing. You really, really, really don't need anything exotic. Now, I've got this set up here that I put together for myself, but I've got another, you know, Kelly Galoop streamer line upstairs on my other rod. I use that for smallmouth all the time. In fact, I use it more than this one. Uh, I just use this to prove a point for this particular video. So, you know, you can use regular lines for your smallmouth fishing. You do not need a Skagit setup. If you, again, if you want to fish it because that's how you like to fish, go for it. But all I'm saying is there are more effective ways to do it. You have more options with a standard, you know, bass bug or smallmouth line, and uh, you have a lot more presentation options, a lot more casting options, and you don't have to cast very far for these fish usually. You're casting, you know, and, and here I was, my maximum cast probably was 40 feet. That was it, maybe. Maybe a little bit more. That was it. I don't have to cast far. I don't need the exotic setup. So keep that in mind. If you're going to go shopping for smallmouth gear, you know, you just, just need a, a standard bass bug line or streamer line, your typical six weight or seven weight, and uh, go have some fun. Maybe a few liters as well like this. And go catch some fish. So give that some thought. Cheers. There, there we go. Just that question. Yep. Another.